Okay, so let's get started. Our next little project is going to be called the offset block. Uh, some machine blocks you might use uh, for measuring or setting up a template or maybe it's used to actually control a machine, but here we have it. We have an offset block and this is what we need to model. So, to, um, yeah, let's bring that back over here. I don't know, it seems to, uh, oh, SolidWorks seems to have disappeared here too. But anyways, what you want to do, like I've been saying before with drawings, you want to look at the drawings, you want to understand it, you want to understand the steps that might be involved in order to put this all together. So if you look at the isometric view, this is kind of what we're looking at here. And, uh, you know, the movie, uh, isometric view over here, which is, uh, you know, this is the front top right. That's going to be the back bottom left. That's the perspective we're looking at. We have everything put in here on top of that, on top of our base feature. Plus, we're going to put a uh, cut in the bottom. Cut in the bottom, uh, especially in something that's large and bulky. It's probably a good idea to put some cuts in there to keep the material from warping uh, when, it, uh, when it might get hot or cold. But, uh, and it also reduces the weight, too, if you can cut out something like that. But, of course, that creates a little bit of waste if you're machining it. If it's going to be a cast part, that's great. So you can actually, uh, you won't have as much waste if it's a cast part. So let's take a look at our base feature. What we're going to be doing is going to be right down here at our right view. We're going to sketch this out on our right view. We're going to start over here at the origin. As I mentioned in class, we're going to go up and over and then a diagonal over here up and down and side and so on and so forth until we get back to the origin. As we're doing this, we're going to go ahead and pick up uh, sketch relations along the way. So this is going to be a vertical one. Going to go over here, we're going to go to horizontal. If we're going to go off of the diagonal, it's not going to have a sketch relation for that and so on and so forth. All these other ones are going to have uh, horizontal and vertical sketch relations associated with it. So we're going to start over here. You can start here and go up. You can go start there and go to the left, however you want to do it. And unlike uh, some of the other uh, parts that we've been doing, kind of like freehand sketching, kind of part of the theme this week, if you're dealing with lines and arcs, it's always a good idea to, you know, maybe dimension that and get that fully defined as you go before you go on to the next step. Probably not as important if you're just dealing with lines over here because you're already going to establish some relationships in here, which is going to prevent it from moving a lot like it will if you're just using lines and arcs. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sketch this out. Just going to put in a rough sketch of what this looks like, and then I'm going to dimension it, and I think it'll be okay. So let's go ahead and put this aside. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to go left, then up, and then over here, and I'm going to finish over on that side. We're going to consider those dimensions that we see on our drawing. So let's go, go back to SolidWorks. Let's go ahead and pick up our material. If we take a look at our drawing again, uh, we're, our material is uh, 1060 H12. It's an aluminum material. And uh, we're going to go ahead and apply that to our model. And then, of course, once we get our base feature, just to reiterate this, once we get our base feature in place, then we're going to go ahead and follow our sheet notes in here and go through all the different steps in order to put this together. Because if we look at our drawing over here, it's got a lot of steps to it. It's got a lot of stuff in there. And if you look at diasymmetric views, it's more than just a base feature. We're going to have our, uh, our back tab. We're going to have our front tab in here. We're going to have this nut uh, cover. It's going to cover the nut so it doesn't get whacked by, uh, by the machine as we put in here. We have a hole that's going to go all the way through over here, as you can see. The hole has also got some threads associated with it, too. These are cosmetic threads. So I'm going to show you how to put that in. Now we have the center support in here. Uh, and we're going to use that as a triangular feature, as I uh, talked about in class. We're going to use a section tool in order to put that together. So I'm going to cut this like right in the middle. And now we're going to extrude that uh, triangular feature to the front and back to the next surface. So... There's a lot involved in here, but once you get the base feature in place, everything else is, uh, you know, it's about the same amount of work, maybe a little bit less work, but we're going to approach this in a step-by-step -step approach. So let's put, go ahead and put that aside. Let's go ahead and pick our material, which is going to be uh, 1060 H12. So right-click in materials, edit material. We're going to go down to aluminum. Aluminum alloy 1060 H12. We're going to go apply and close. So if you look at that drawing again, we're going to be looking at the right view. So let's go ahead and look at the right plane. We're going to go to sketch. We're going to start with line. We're just going to start with line. And we're going to start from the origin. And I'm going to go ahead and sketch that out. Roughly it's about 300. But if you go half that, that's fine. This is going to eventually get put into place when we uh, put our dimensions here. So we're just going to sketch this out roughly to what it looks like. Uh, sketch that over. Sketch this over. This is going to be a little bit taller than that one. I'm going to go over here and that's a diagonal. This is going to be collinear down here now. So we're going to assume that, and we're going to bring that over. It doesn't have to look perfect. And we're going to put that in place. Now we're going to pin on our first dimension. Everything will scale to that dimension, even though it's about a third of what it needs to be. Maybe half. It's about a third, maybe. But uh, 385 is going to be the dimension on that. So we got that in place. If you look at the dimension over here on this left side, we don't really see a dimension over there. 
but we do see it uh, on this side. So maybe we can build that from the right and work our way over to the left. So we don't see this dimension in here. The reason why we don't see a dimension in there, it's going to be fully defined by the time we get over there. So we don't necessarily have to have that dimension in place. But that dimension is going to be determined, or that length outside is going to be determined by the model geometry that we're going to put in place as we're working our way over. So let's go over to this one. We know that this one's going to be 25. So we'll put that in place. And then from this one to the end, uh, as we look at those dimensions, that's going to be 200, so we're going to put that one in place. We have an angle dimension in here. This is going to be 118, so we're going to go and click on that line and that line, uh, not the midpoint, so let's do escape once. Let's go ahead and pick that line, and we're going to put that in there, so 118 for that. Uh, the height, we see a height in that, that's going to be 162 if you look at the drawing. So 162, now you can see it's beginning to get fully defined. The very top of this over here, that's going to be 40, top of that one's going to be 60, and this one's going to be offset by 15, so let's keep that in mind as we put that over. Uh, so this one's going to be 40. Now when we put 40 on this one, that's going to make that diagonal line fully defined. So it's beginning to get fully defined as we move through this. So this one's going to be 60, so let's go and put this one on there. And then this one's going to be 15 below the other one, so let's make sure we do that. Let's go ahead and drag that down a little bit, make sure it's below it. We could exaggerate that a little bit. Let's go ahead and put a uh, dimension between that. It's going to be 15. If you're thinking about the drawing ultimately, you might want to stick that uh, dimension over there on that side. So now we need this thickness in here. We need to go from that line to that line. If you look at a drawing, thickness is going to be 42 millimeters. And once we do that, the thing should be fully defined. So we're going to go between that line and this line, drag this out over here, make that 42 for the height. Now it's black and it's fully defined. So let's go ahead and extrude this. We're going to do a mid-plane extrude, even though ultimately it's not going to be uh, uh, symmetrical uh, about the x-axis. So as we uh, put this together, if we're looking at the x-axis here, initially it's going to be symmetrical, but ultimately by the time we add that back tab and some of the other features in here, it may not be. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the thickness on this. We're going to go ahead and pick apart our drawing and take a look at that. Uh, we're going to find that thickness over here in our section AA. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, 120 uh, millimeters is going to be the value there. So let's drag that out of there. So 120. And now it's, uh, gosh, it's asking for our selected contours. Now that shouldn't be. If we have enclosed geometry in there, it shouldn't really be asking for our selected contours. But uh, let's go ahead and finish this. I'm going to show you where the mistake is. We're going to go to mid-plane. Select the contours, you're going to select that whole region, or we can do the contour by selecting uh, one of the edges of that. And you can see a preview of both of those. Uh, one's going to be orange, one's going to be pink. If we click on that, now we see what we're doing. So the sketch disappears, it's in the background. But why wasn't that continuous? If we right click on that sketch, it even shows it being a negative sign, even though we saw it all black. So what goes on with that? So if we go normal to the screen and take a look at this, I kind of notice this. This happens every now and then. You're clicking, you're clicking your lines out. You're being too quick. And sometimes you get this teeny weeny little pony line that's uh, not fully defined. In fact, it's a thinner line type than the other ones. It's blue. Endpoint's blue. So what you want to do, if you can't really find that, is kind of go to each one of these corners and highlight those corners and see what you can find. So that's where that line is. I saw it. It was big. It was visible. We're going to go and delete that and watch that. When we do it, that sketch number one now becomes fully defined. And now we're ready to go. So we're going to go to the green check mark or go to rebuild. It's already there. So we're just going to rebuild it. And we're going to take our boss extrude and we're going to call that our base feature. Okay, so what's next? Let's go back to our drawing. Let's look at our sheet notes number two. We're going to pin on our front tab and fill it. And we're going to look at the mass properties. I'm pretty confident about this right now, so I'm not going to check my mass properties. But we will check it after you put it in the front tab. So to kind of uh, make sure you you have the right or, or, or orientation, let's go ahead and click the space bar. Let's go to the front view up here, and that should be the front view. And of course, if we go to the right view over here, that's what we uh, sketch. You want to make sure that what you see there matches the views that you see in your drawing over here. So a right view should look like uh, the right view that we have in our model. Which it does, so we're okay. So now we're going to put in that front tab. Front tab is going to be, if I can bring that drawing bag, is going to be this feature over here. And we can see it a little bit more clearly if we look at the top view. So we're looking at a couple different uh, items in here. 
Uh, it's going to be 60 by however it's going to resolve here. Uh, we can probably get those dimensions off of another one. It's going to be uh, 25 thick, so if you look at the front view over here, it's going to be 25 thick and it's going to be 70 wide. So we're going to be looking at a couple different views in, get, in order to get that in there. Then once we do that, we're, we're going to put a radius, a fillet radius on all four edges. So this edge, this edge, that edge, and that edge. So let's keep that in mind. 30, no not 30, it's going to be 60 by 70 by uh, 25 millimeters. I may have said a quarter, but it's going to be 25 millimeters uh, thick. So how do we do that? Well, gosh, we're going to go to uh, we're going to go to the front uh, top plane. We're going to go ahead and sketch in that. So go to the sketch tab. Let's go to uh, perhaps a corner rectangle, and let's go normal to that, and let's go ahead and sketch that out. So we're going to start uh, from that point over here, and just kind of sketch that out. So it's going to be 60, off in this direction. So we're going to make that 60, and it's going to be 70 in that direction. And then we're going to go to extrude. So we're going to go to the uh, features, extrude the boss space. We're going to go up by 25 millimeters. It's going to remember the value had in there before. And we can go to the green check mark. Now conceivably, we could have, in the sketch environment, put in our fillets. But because we're going to put in feature fillets in these two other corners, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to save that. But as an alternative, you could do that, and you're still going to get the same mass properties. So go to the green check mark. Let's go to fillet. Fillet radius is going to be, as we looked at, it's going to be 15 millimeters, so we're going to type in 15 down here. And we still have the selection box open, that light blue selection box is looking for a selection out here in a model area, or graphics area, as SolidWorks calls it. So we're going to go ahead, click on that edge, that edge, scoot out a little bit, and we're going to click on these two edges over here, that one, and that one. And then we're going to go to the green check mark, or right click on the mouse, or go up here and click on that check mark, and that gets that into place. So let's go ahead and uh, back to our drawing and see what we're going to be looking at for mass properties. So we did front tab and fillets. Mass should be uh, 985592. So let's go ahead and move that out a little way. Take a look at that. So we have 9859.59. But let's go to options and uh, increase that up by one decimal point. Let's take our um, slider and move that over to the highest uh, resolution. Go to OK. Like so it's a 9859.592. Soften the x-axis now by a negative uh, 704. Compare that to our drawing. Looks like it's 704, 55, 851 for the Y, and then uh, 231, 345 for the Z, which we got. So I feel pretty confident about that, and you should too by the time you get here. So see what the next step is. Let's bring our drawing over here, go to the next one. So the whole wizard. Uh, it's going to be a counter burr hole, ANSI metric, hex bolt. ANSI is going to be a B18.2.3.5M, 3.5M. It's probably going to be the ultimate hole size. And then uh, the size is going to be 14. So it's going to be a uh, metric uh, M14. If it's going to be normal, then we're going to look at our mass properties right after that. So let's do that. So we're going to go over here to features, go to hole wizard. I think about a hole wizard again, it kind of puts in that hole for us so we don't have to do the, the revolve cut. And so we're going to click on the following. We're going to click on uh, counter bore, ANSI metric, hex bolt, 18.2.3.5M. Looks like the same one we had before. So I was playing around with this earlier, so it's remembering what we did before. And then uh, the size is going to be M14, and if it's going to be normal. So down here, M14, wow. If it's normal, it's all kind of done for us. It remembers what we did. In fact, I didn't play with this until, you know, it was yesterday when I played with this last, but it still remembers it. So, and then uh, if it's going to be normal, so yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that. So the next thing we're going to do is positions. So let's take a look at our drawing and see what we need to do. Uh, this one is going to be uh, centered by uh, the top and bottom over here. Uh, if you look at the top view, it's going to be centered uh, right in the middle of that. So we're going to put a center line down the middle of that and put that hole right in the middle of it. But it's going to be offset from the front by 60. Then over here we have some offsets in here too. It's going to be offset by 30, just like it is uh, over here on the left-hand side. In the back it's going to be offset by 30. And then, uh, yeah, and then it's going to have a difference over here of 25. Instead of it being centered, it's going to have a difference of 25 over there too. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go to positions. First thing it's going to do is it's going to ask us for a surface. Don't do 3D sketch. 
We're going to click on this surface. These are going to be coplanar, so it doesn't really matter what surface we choose. But let's go ahead and put this. Uh, we're going to put in all three points. We're going to exaggerate that a little bit so we don't uh, put in some reference geometry that we don't want. We certainly don't want to pick up some sketch relations that we don't need yet. So let's go ahead and do this one. So this one is going to be uh, 30 from the front, so let's go ahead and put that dimension in there. And we just can continue to add uh, different elements in here. Because remember, the whole wizard is only going to be looking for points. We can put in all sorts of stuff. Sketch geometry, model geometry, lines and arcs and circles. But the only thing the whole wizard is going to care about are going to be points. At least at this point. So we're going to make that 30. It's going to be centered. So what we want to do is we want to put in a center line. This time we are going to go ahead and connect from one uh, midpoint to the other. But uh, that's not really what we want to do here. We want to go top to bottom. So let's do this. We're going to go back to center line. We're going to go and pick the midpoint over here. We're going to extend that over in that direction. Now if we drag that over here, remember that point can't go left and right as we see it on the screen. It can only go top and bottom. So now we're going to go ahead and park it on that center line. And now that's fully defined. So this one, let's go ahead and put a center line between uh, these two points. And then we're going to take that center line, we're going to make that vertical as we see it on the screen. Ooh. Nope, we're going to have to make that horizontal. So if one doesn't work, we're going to do the other. And you notice that I went into that sketch relation, just deleted it. That gives us the capacity to reassign that. So we're going to go ahead and make that horizontal. Uh, typically, it'll, it's, you know, it's going to be vertical or horizontal to the screen. But if you move this around and rotate that around a little bit, it may uh, change that orientation or it may keep that orientation. And, uh, you know, your view is going to change, so it may not be exactly what you're thinking or anticipating. So this is going to be offset by 30. So we're going to click between that line and this. We're going to make that 30 millimeters. And then on one of these, we're going to go ahead and click on that point, And we're going to make that offset by 25 millimeters. Between that and that, it's going to be 25. So that makes that point fully defined. But this point's not. It's like way off in the middle of nowhere. So what are we going to do? We're going to bring back our center line. We're going to go from the midpoint out here, exaggerate that. We're going to put that line way out there. We're going to click on that line and that point and this point, and we're going to apply the symmetric relationship. Conceivably, another way of doing that, uh, we're not going to erase that, but we could. You know, we can uh, get rid of that dimension, and maybe just put a dimension between that point and that edge. And it's still going to be 30, but you might want to type in 30 just to make sure you don't have you know, decimals kicking out there. And uh, another way of doing this is clicking on that point in that line, and we're going to mirror that. It does the same thing. So now that we have that in place, go to the green check mark. We have our holes in place. Let's go ahead and check our mass properties. So we evaluate mass properties. Now we're looking at a mass of uh, 9, 97, 91, 697. So let's see what we have in here. Move that over a little bit so we can see what we're looking for. 97, 91, 697. So the X is off by 651. See what we have there? 651. It's a negative 651. 56, uh, 128. 56, 128 in the Z. 231.851. Exactly where we need to be. So we're going to go ahead and close that out. Let's go ahead and rename our features. So this is going to be our front tab. Uh, our edge fillets, maybe. Uh, probably one enabling exactly the way they have them in the drawing or something very similar to that. So we can call that front tab or just tab fillets maybe. And then a counter bore, we could probably just keep that as just plain old counter bore and I think that'll work out okay. So what's next, uh, as you might ask? Well, I'm going to show you. What we're going to do is we're going to put in a 17 millimeter hole that we can see in the front view. And the call out for the threads in here is going to be a 20 millimeter size hole or thread. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit bigger than a hole. And I'll show you that when we put in the cosmetic thread because it's going to put in a thread, what looks like a thread to us, but um, it's actually going to uh, put in some uh, extra additional annotations in here in, in order to help define that hole. So the thread is actually going to be a 20 millimeter uh, thread in here. It's going to be 20 millimeter wide because uh, when you thread a hole, uh, it's going to be a little bit bigger than the hole itself. Uh, initially, it's going to uh, you know, squeeze some threads out to the inside and actually make some cuts. It's actually going to make some cuts to the inside and uh, squeeze some of those threads out to the outside. So because metal bends, it's able to do that and it creates a nice thread in there. So the way you read that is going to be a 20 millimeter hole. It's going to be a threaded hole and each thread is going to be 2.5 millimeters on, on the cycle. 
a little bit different from the English units where you're talking about threads per inch. Now you're talking about millimeters per thread. So it's going to be 2.5 millimeter cycle per thread. Now we're going to take that hole. We're going to extend out all the way through. You can't really see that in any other view except for this view. You can actually see the threads in this view. But that uh, cut goes all the way through. So I talk about cosmetic threads, cosmetic threads. Uh, it's going to be 50 millimeters deep. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to go ahead and cut that. So that's what we need to know. So let's go back to our model. Swing this around. Let's go ahead and click on that face. Go to sketch. Let's put in our uh, reference geometry. So let's go normal to that. And I might want to go to the origin and sketch that up. Remember, it's still symmetrical. Or we do have some symmetry in here where the origin is still right in the middle of that edge. So we're going to go ahead and put that line up. We're going to take a circle. We're going to sketch on that circle. We're going to make that uh, 17 millimeters. So we're going to take a dimension. Type in 17. Let's go back to our drawing and see what that says on that drawing. We need to be able to place that hole 115 millimeters from the bottom and it's already centered. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take that and that edge. Go to the circle and the edge. It'll go to the middle by default, but you want to give yourself the flexibility in being able to make it a maximum or minimum condition. So now that we have that in place, let's go ahead and do uh, the features. Extrude to cut. We're going to do through a wall. So it goes through both of them, not only this one, but for the other one too, and then go to the green check mark. So now we're going to put in our cosmetic thread. So the what you do, I'm not certain where it's at. It's, a, it's a, another feature in here under tools, but if you quite literally, and this is kind of a nice exercise, if you don't know exactly what it is or where it is, a tool that might be obscure like this, just type in cosmetic up here and go to the pull down arrow and make sure you're looking for a command. It's really handy. Because there's a lot of places, a lot of tools that are hiding in, in the shadows and corners and under drawers and rugs and stuff like that. To find that, you uh, can go to the search option and it'll show you where it is. Not only will it show you where it is, but you can actually access the tool. So let's do that. Let's just go to, uh, let's, just, uh, let's just press the enter here and it's going to show us cosmetic thread. So now we have some options in here. One thing to keep in mind about the cosmetic thread is exactly what it says. It's cosmetic. It doesn't do anything to the model. It doesn't make it bigger. It doesn't make it smaller. It has no effect in that hole except to give you some additional annotations to it and provide some uh, visual properties that you can see. So thread settings, we're going to go ahead and click on a circular edge. Again, rest your cursor over that selection box. We're going to go ahead and click on this guy. And then uh, we're going to start from this plane to do that. ANSI metric, machine threads, it's just going to size it for us, so we don't really have to do much in here, but if you want to do something different, you could do that. The threads are going to be 2.5 millimeters, which is a really coarse thread, but if you want to do something different, make it a little bit uh, finer or maybe coarser, you could do that. Let's just stick with the default settings. In blind, we're going to go up to 50 millimeters. So we're only going to go for, through 50 millimeters here. Uh, the block itself, this portion of that block, is going to be 60 millimeters, so the threads aren't going to go all the way through. If we go to the green check mark, uh, visually it gives you something here. It kind of shows you where the threads are going to be. So if we cut those threads into this and start cutting the threads in there with a tap tool, if you've ever seen that, it kind of looks like a bolt that's made of really hardened steel. So it's able to push material out of the way. It's going to make some cuts in here, while at the same time it's going to push some of the material off into the inside. It's going to make the cuts it's going to make some cuts to the inside, push material to the outside of that surface of that hole. So that's one visual property. Another visual property is you want to go up to, uh, we're going to go to settings up here, we're going to go to options, we're going to go to document properties, and we're going to go to detailing. And we want to do this, shaded cosmetic threads, we want to be able to see that. So if you go to that check mark up here and go to OK, now we see something that's visual doesn't go all the way through. If you look at it from this end, you can see that it stops at 50 millimeters. And when we look at the drawing in here too, you can see that uh, you can see the threads in here too. It kind of stops at the very end of that at 50 millimeters. So visually, it's just kind of showing you, uh, it's just taking an image of what looks like uh, tiger stripes or zebra stripes in here. It's just propagating it in there so you can visually see what it looks like. And that's pretty much all you need to do. That's your cosmetic thread. So let's go back to our drawing and make sure we have uh, the right mass properties. We're going to go to Evaluate, Mass Properties. So we're looking at 97.14.955. So over here, our front, more, uh, front hole with our cosmetic thread, 97.14.955. And then uh, the X is off by a negative uh, 65, 656. 
Let's see if we have that. Ooh, yeah, it is. Okay, X is off by 656. Y is off by a positive 55.663. So if you continue on in that, uh, let's see, cosmetic threads, 55.663, and then 231.649, and then 231.649. So it looks like we have that. Okay, so we're more than halfway through this, which, you know, if you're looking at drawing initially, the drawing looked horrendous. It looked like there was a lot, a lot of stuff in here. But actually, it's coming, uh, coming along pretty easy. And uh, we're going to uh, tackle our fifth out of seven uh, element in here, and that's going to be our nut shield. So how do we do that? We want to be able to sketch in this uh, face in here. So what we can do is we can click in that face, go to sketch, kind of sketch it off to the side if we want to do that. Click the center of the circle. Maybe we, uh, put in two concentric circles in there and then try to dimension that. But if you want to do that perpendicular to that surface or parallel, parallel to that surface, perpendicular to eyesight, what you can do is you can go over here to the suction tool. And that's going to temporarily cut our part. So it's cutting it way, way back there. But we can take that uh, face and move that over. And then we're going to go to the green check mark. And this is just temporary. But now we have the capacity to actually uh, you know, sketch uh, like we would normally to, uh, to be able to see that. So we're going to go to uh, N or Control-8. We're going to see that on face, on end. And now we're going to put in our dimension. So let's look at our uh, Detail C in here. Detail C is uh, what we're looking at down here. So it actually blows that up. And uh, it's, you know, it's going to be hard to put in all the dimensions on this view. So what we did is we created a detail of that view and made it twice as big. And now we were able to put in the dimensions in such a manner that we could actually read them and see what they're being applied to a little bit easier than just on that section view. So let's consider this. Uh, the, you know, the difference between those two circles that we have in there is going to be 7 millimeters, and the outside uh, diameter is going to be 65 millimeters. And if you look at uh, what view, we're going to have to look at a view in here in order to get the thickness of that. Here it is. It's going to be in our top view. It's going to be 15 millimeters thick. So 7, 65, and 15. So let's put in that outside dimension. That's going to be 65. 7, difference between the two. Now let's do extrude. Extrude to cut. We're going to make that 15, not extrude to cut. Just extrude to boss space. And we're going to go to the green check mark. Green check mark one more time. Now we have that in place. So kind of funny. It shows us the threads in here. It's kind of a glitch in SolidWorks. We know we didn't put threads that thick. When we take off that section tool like we can do right now, those threads disappear. So it's kind of funny. I brought that to the attention of SolidWorks a few years ago, but uh, they don't care. You know, it's still there, but that's okay. So now we're going to do the same thing over here, too. We're going to go ahead and put in that triangular uh, center support. So let's take a look at our drawing before we go to our mass properties. What we're looking at is a triangle. It's going to be right down here in the middle. So we're going to take that center line. It's going to go from the origin. We're going to bring that up to the top, and we're going to sketch that down to the side. So it's going to be 35 tall. It's going to be 40 wide. And then we're going to extrude it uh, back and forth. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, take a, let's go to our front plane, and let's go to sketch. So we're going to go to sketch. We're going to go normal to the screen. We're going to take our center line. We're going to go ahead and uh, start that on this edge over here. We're going to pick up that midpoint relationship in here, make that vertical. Now we're going to sketch out, uh, sketch out uh, half of that rectangle. So we're going to go from there to there. We're going to make sure that that's on the line so we have a coincident relationship down here. Coincident relationship over here. We have a midpoint relationship down here. Remember, don't ignore your uh, relationships that you have. Then this one is going to be coincident too. So that tells you, when you go on top of these coincident relationships, it tells you what, uh, what it's uh, you know, being coincident to, or horizontal, or vertical, or whatever. So if we click in this one, we can tell that the endpoint of that line, that's going to be magenta or pink. If you click over here, uh, you just have to hover your mouse over that, and then the endpoint of that line and then that edge are going to be coincident. So now let's put in our dimensions. So 40 across, and so we're going to go ahead and click on this point, that line, remember that's half a dimension, that's a double dimension, or actually a single dimension on the left side, double dimension. If you go to the other side of that center line, we're going to make that 40 across the bottom, and 35 going up. And if we do that, we're going to right-click on that, we're going to go ahead and select the chain. It's going to pick up both of those elements, 
And with the control key, we're going to go ahead and click on that center line, go up here to mirror entities. Now we have that over in the other side. Go to features, extrude a boss space. We're going to go to up to next on one of them. Ooh, that's not where we want to be. So we actually have that on a different plane. So how are we going to do that? So let's do this. Because we started over here, over here with the origin, we probably shouldn't have been on the front plane. But let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and complete this, go to the green check mark, and just just pick a different plane. So that kind of gives us an opportunity to actually make some uh, corrections in here. So if we right click under Sketch 7, let's go ahead and pick a different plane. And this time, instead of the front plane, let's go ahead and click on this surface, and then go to the green check mark. And now it's going to go up to Next. If you can take a look at that sketch, right click at that sketch. We have that sketch up here, and if you go up to next, it's going to go up to the next surface it runs into. So let's go ahead and rebuild that. Let's take off our section tool and take a look at that. Now we could conceivably have done the same thing, uh, picked that surface over here and gone up to next, which would have been that surface, and it would have resolved itself there too. So with that in place, let's go ahead and uh, kind of uh, finish this. We're going to call this and rename our features in here. We're going to call this our front hole. And then this feature is going to be our, uh, what do we call that? We call that our nut shield. So it shields the, the nuts that's going to be in there, or bolt shield perhaps. Child, S-I-G-L-D, I think that's spelled right. And then this one's going to be our center support. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check our mass properties. Oh man, I can't spell today, can I? So mass properties, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go up to evaluate uh, mass properties and see what we have in here. So what we should be looking for, if we bring our drawing over here, with the nut shield and our center support, we're looking at a mass of 103,396. 103,396. Center of mass is going to be a negative uh, 637. Let's see if we got that right. Negative uh, 637 and 55,923. 55, 923, and then 232, 254, and we have that. We have that correct, so we should be feeling pretty good about our model. If you made it this far, we only have one more feature to go. Okay, so our last one, we're going to have that hole in the bottom. Let's go ahead and take a look, a look at our drawing. I always want to refer back to the drawing. We're going to have this hole in the bottom. Just going to cut out some material. And if you look at this, this is uh, most of it's defined off this uh, top view, or top uh, projected view. And uh, what we're looking at over here is uh, this cut. So let's take a look at that. We have a 20 millimeter offset from that edge over here on the bottom. Uh, the same thing is over here. So in the front and the back, they're going to be offset by the same value. And then over here, too, uh, front to back, uh, I think it's going to be offset uh, there, too. So we can actually pick that up by going to our detail C. So bottom cut on both sides, that's going to be 20 millimeters. It's going to be 20 millimeters thick, uh, that cut. And uh, I think everything's 20, 20, 20. So let's go ahead and do that, including the radius in here, which is going to be this value in here. That's going to be 22. 20 also, I should say. Let's go ahead and click on the surface in here. We're going to start with sketch. We're going to start with a corner rectangle. We're just going to roughly sketch that in place. So a couple things we could do. Let's put in, um, let's, we'll put in our radius, uh, our fillet uh, radius in last. But uh, if we want to dimension this between this line and that edge over here, we can't really pick up that edge. A couple things we could do, we can right click over here. I think we could do that. No, it's not going to let us do that. Sometimes you can select other. But the easiest thing to do, or one of the one ways to do that, let me just back up a little bit. One way to do that is just rotate your model and then pick that. And now we can put in the value in here of 20 if we want to do that. Another way of doing this is actually change uh, the view of that model. Go to our display style where you show uh, hidden lines visible now. And if we go normal to that screen, now we can see all the edges that we need to pick from. So now we're going to go down here to Smart Dimension. We're going to go click on that and that. We're going to make that 20. We can take a center line in here just so we can minimize the dimensions. And we're going to go and click on this center line. Go off our model with that. And now we can take the midpoint of this line by selecting midpoint. And that line in here, I think it's already got a midpoint relationship to it. But if not, now we have the capacity to just uh, put a, a measurement or a dimension on one side. It's going to be the equivalent dimension on the other side. So we're going to go and click on that edge, that line, and that edge. We're going to make that 20. And just for the fun of it, we're going to do it over here. So it's fully defined over there. 
And what's going to happen if we do that? It's going to kind of highlight this and give us an error saying if we continue, we're going to make it all yellow for you. But we can make that dimension by default. It's going to say we're going to make that dimension driven. And just to prove that that's going to be 20, it's gray in the background. It's not driving it. But if you were to change this value, like maybe make that 22, that one's going to be 22 too. So it's driven by existing uh, geometry they have in place. So sometimes you can put a dimension in there just to see what the result's going to be, but it's not going to be a driving dimension like that is. If you try to go in here, change the value, it says the dimension selected is a driven dimension. Its value cannot be changed. So we're okay with that. So the last dimension is going to be between that edge and this edge over here. We're going to put a dimension on that, smart dimension. We're going to make that 20 also. Just make sure we're picking the right edge, which we are. It's going to be internal to that. I think that's what we're doing. No, actually, we go out to the very end, so let's do that. We're going to take that dimension. We could delete that, but another way of doing this is take the end point of that dimension and dragging it to where it needs to go. So that might save you a little bit of time. And we can go back in that dimension and change its value. So it's going to be 80. So now let's put in our fillet radiuses. This one's going to be 20. The blue selection box over here is uh, asking for some sort of selection in our modeling area, in our graphics area. So we're going to go ahead and click on that, that, that. And there, you know, we have that midpoint relationship in here. And if we weren't careful about this, that midpoint relationship is going to make our whole model go explode and, unless we balance it. So if we put that fillet radius in there on this side but not that side, not going to like us. This is going to give us an error. But if we balance it, we're going to go to yes. By putting a dimension in over here and go to yes over here, it's going to be balanced. That midpoint relationship is still going to be valid. So go to the green check mark. Now we're going to do a feature. We're going to do, uh, yep, we have to get out of fillets. Go to the green check mark again. We're going to go to extrude a cut. And you can see that's going to extrude up. I think the value is going to remember the value that we had in there before. We're going to make that 20. Go to the green check mark. Now we have that in place. So if you don't like this view, you can go back to uh, you know you can go back to the display manager, uh, display settings. Shaded, uh, shaded with edges is what we had before. Shaded might be another way of doing it. If you have your lights on, that's going to be okay. If you don't have your lights on, it's going to look like one big gray blob. So be careful with that. But let's go back to shaded with edges, and then that's uh, what we're kind of used to. And let's go back to evaluate mass properties and make sure we have the right values. So swing this guy in here. So ultimately, at the very end, we're looking at a mass of 890.06.022, which is what we have in here. And then the X, try to follow this, is going to be a negative 715, which we have. 61581, which we have. And then 231, 783, 231, 783, we have that in place. And everything is good. So that is how you put together your connection block or your offset block. It's got a lot of different features in there. We had a base feature. We put in uh, our, our front tab, put in our whole wizard holes. We put in our, our nut shield or our, you know, our bolt shield in here. Make sure it doesn't get dinged up by machinery. Put in this hole in here before that. And we put in our cos cosmetic thread on that front hole. Put in our sudden center support. And we put in our bottom cut. And we're ready to go with that. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this and go ahead and conclude and we will see you in class. Yeah, not BT, but bottom cut. Oh, I can't spell, but uh, yeah, we'll go and conclude this right now.